Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 YouTube, this is your boy Jamari Four here once again, and oh my god, <laughs> this episode of Empire. Uh, I went through so many emotions during this particular episode, just whoo. Lee Daniels <laughs> and the writing staff at Fox. <laughs> Round of applause for everybody involved in this particular episode, if any other. Whew, I was glued to the television the entire time. <laughs> the entire time. So we're going to go ahead and get into her. So if y'all remember last week, that messy reporter, I, somebody told me her name in the comments and I forgot already. I think I read it once and forgot, but, you know, it, during the episode, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> so she gives Andre that paper that her, that his grandmother is still alive and just being held in this home. And so we start the episode off. Andre went up to the place. Uh, was it a different state? I don't remember if it was in a different state. I think it was in Pennsylvania, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So he went up there and they in there playing bingo. Everything looks innocent enough for now. You know, she's he's asking her like how do how are things here? And you know, uh she was like, you know, I hate Mondays because I hate the meatloaf. And there's some other little old messy bitch that's next to her talking about she's talking about meatloaf Mondays and it's delicious. And Andre is getting offended, like, bitch, who who are you? Why are you in our conversation? Like Stay over there and manage your own bingo table while you're up here in our conversation. Like that's how you can see that uh, Andre was getting kind of annoyed. And at the time, it made sense because it's just like, who is this random lady? Like, what are you, what are you doing? And so, <laughs> the guy, some other guy, you know, they're calling out these numbers for bingos. And some other guy yells, bingo. And <laughs> uh, Miss, what do I want to call her? Do I want to call her Lucy's mama? Do I want to call her Leia Walker? Do I want to call her grandma? I'm thinking I'm going to call her grandma. Grandma was pissed. Okay, Grandma knocked her whole thing over and was just angry. And I was just like, oh. If I was Andre, I personally, me, I would have been having second thoughts at that moment forward. I would be like, mm, do I really want to? Mm, I think I'll pass. You know what? You you be good, Grandma. You be blessed. That's what I would have done. Like, because I can't. I was not about to sit here and deal with that. But she looks at him. After he's probably distraught and afraid of her by now, or at least I would be, she looks at him, turns her head slightly, you know, 45 degrees to the right, and it's like, are you kidding to me? Because your eyes. And she reaches out and touches her fa his face, and I'm just like, Andre, run. <laughs> I know you want to find out more about, you know, your situation, but run. I'm just getting all types of psycho killer bitch vibes from this girl, um, from this lady, because, no. So then we pick back up at Empire, and Cookie is serving me Pocahontas Colors of the Wind teas with this, I don't even know what the fabric is, the little dangly shit that be from her uh, uh, her arms and waist like they use, like the most of the Native Americans used to wear. I'm like, Cookie, what's going on? And she had like some kind of blue tribal looking makeup on. I'm like... Girl, who did your who did your face? Did the makeup artist? I think they may have tried you, honey. That's that was a little random, but they set up the scene to where you know I guess they're trying to set up this whole Acer performance, and Cookie's sisters come out of the clear blue sky and are like, you know, uh, what's the older? I think Candace is the older one, the one that's played by Vivica Fox, and she's telling her that you know she's tired of you know Carol's kids being staying with her and you know loose uh cookie's trying to be like you know just why are you trying to do this now why are you trying to stir the pot and be messy and of course candace is like look she needs to be they need to be with their mama and i ain't better be sitting here dealing with all this <laughs> you know so y'all need to get together and apparently there's this producer this nice fine black producer who's i guess putting the show 
together for the Acers and is kind of deciding on what goes where in uh, the Acers. So I guess he's kind of like putting the show together. And <laughs> I guess Cookie had made a deal with him to do this some type of different song. And Jamal wanted to do the song that he had with Frida. And so he's like, hey, you know, I want to do this song. Like, there's no reason for me not to be able to do this song. And he's like, look, no, we ain't doing it. You know, this is my project. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And the guy walks out. Jamal goes behind him and is like, look, if it wasn't for me, there wouldn't even be no damn show. And the dude looks at him like, and he said, you know what? Everybody get out. And I'm like, oh, 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 okay. Everybody leaves. And at some, for some reason, as soon as that door closed and everybody left, I was like, Something ain't right here. <laughs> Something is amiss. You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> he goes, they start talking about, you know, you're just going to step up in here uh, uh, and try to run my show. And then he kisses him. And Jamal's like, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. And so, <laughs> Oh well, all right. And then shit just went. It it went there. It it went there. Clothes was flying. They was thrown up against shit. Backs ripped. I was just like, oh. Hmm. Mm -mm. I was watching this scene for some type of way. Like, wait a minute. This is this isn't right. I feel un, I feel unsaved right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, that shit was hot. I was just saying, shit, Michael ain't got nothing on Mr. Producer Man. That's all I'm saying. Woo! All right, Jamal. I know Jamal got them cakes blown out. I'm just saying, because you could just... Mm. Girl! I'm telling you, I was flustered watching that scene, y'all. I was like, ooh. That was even... Uh, y'all remember last week when Lucius was... Um, Screwing that old, old producer lady and it was about to be like soft porn up in there. Now, they didn't even do as much as uh, what Lucia did and did, but it was just the scenery, the roughness. So, I was just like, oh my. Who hold up, child. I told you, child, I had to, I had to, I had to pause and go regather myself after watching that. I was like, all right, Jamal, that's what I'm talking about. Shit, Michael, who? So, Cookie brings, you know, all the guys together, the sons and, well, Jamal and uh, Hakeem and Lucius about this song. And they fighting back and forth about how they want the song for the Acer performance to go. And she's trying to be like, look, y'all about to fuck this up. This is my shit. We're going to do this shit how I say we're going to do it, you know. And Andre comes in and was like, you know, I have somebody here who might have an interesting perspective. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh shit, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's about to get real because you already know who we about to bring up in here. We don't know what's going to happen. Is she going to flip out and cut everybody? Is she about to go on a massive shooting? We just don't know. So he brings the grandma in here and Lucius froze. Lucius was just staring there. His eyes were like watery. I don't. You could tell he was like a mixture of angry, afraid, pissed it just was all types of emotions in one and Luke and Andre is just going off like look you know this is our grandmother you try to tell her that she's dead you know and the other two brothers are like what are you talking about like who what's what's going on and they're like this whole time he's sending her away for 21 years and has been secretly sending thirsty out there to pay off anybody that wants to know that she's even there and the whole time Lucius is just staring at her like I'm just like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? I'm, I'm just, I'm so nervous, getting all this anxiety and stuff. And so, she's like, you know, she's calling up by his real name, Dwight, and she's reaching out, and I'm just like, oh lord. And then he's he then he finally breaks his concentration away from her and looks at Andre and is like, you have no idea what you've done, and he storms away. And so now Cookie comes to uh, Lucius and is like. So, do you have any more lies? Like, it's the fact that you lied about your name, you lied about your mama. It's just like, okay, what don't, what else don't I know? And he was trying to say like, well, you know, at the time, 
you and I were together. We had about two and a half kids. So I'm guessing that she was pregnant with Hakeem at the time. And uh, there was some law where they were kicking all the mentally ill out on the street. And one day I stumbled over her and we just, you know, we were struggling at the time. So we couldn't take her in. And she was just like, why couldn't you just tell me? And he just like, I wanted her to stay dead in my mind, which there's just a lot of trauma with Lucius and this whole mother situation. So I really, it's hard to say what you would do in that situation because if you have the kind of experiences that he had, I can't say that I wouldn't have done the same thing to be completely honest with you. So now, <laughs> Lucius, not Lucius, but Andre is talking to Rhonda, trying to convince her of how or why they need to be taking care of his grandmother now. And Rhonda's like, uh, I think not. And she's just, you know, he's trying to plead his case. He looks over and sees Thirsty with uh with his grandma putting her into the car and, and <laughs> he's like, wait, what you doing? What you doing? And he's like, look, we need to take her back. She does not belong here. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, no, like, why are you trying to hide her away? And then Lucius come, Lucius and Cookie come out like, look, you don't know what you're dealing with here. And he's like, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. You trying to do this? And, you know, Andre's just in his feelings. He's upset that he's, you know, was lied to about his grandmother and the illness. And he's trying to get this kinship, you know, uh, this relative trait about this whole mental illness thing together. So he's just, you know pro, you know, taking care of grandma, but the other ones are just like, look, listen, trust us. And then, but she's like, you know, I want to go home with Dwight. And so he's just like, oh Lord. So they bring her into the house. <laughs> they bring her into the house. She eating and she's hiding stuff underneath the, the, the placement. I don't know what that was about. I don't know if I missed something, but he's like Dwight or she's like, Dwight, I'm ready to go to bed now. And so she's like, okay, I'm going to have the nurse take you to bed. He goes to the uh, the caretaker and is like, look, listen, bitch, I need you to come close. I need you to make sure she takes every single one of her pills, not miss a one. I need you to make sure it goes down her throat. Open her mouth. Look underneath her tongue, bitch, okay? Make sure there's no remnants. It's not hidden behind a fake tooth or anything. Make sure she takes every single one of those pills. Don't take your eyes off of her and don't let anybody come and see her unless you tell me about it first. <laughs> Lucius was trying to set the ground rules and I'm just like, okay, I, he knows He's the only one that really knows what they're dealing with here. So after we get through that scene, we see the reporter is driving in a car with Thirsty. I'm not sure how they linked up. I'm not sure if I missed that. But he's asking her, like, so what got you into reporting? Like, what, what makes you think that this doing this story on Lucius and Cookie or whatnot is going to help you? Like, what what's your whole thing here? And she's like, well, I've always been such a big fan of the truth and, you know, the truth will set you free or some bullshit, she said. And he's like, the truth, you know, that's why I became an attorney. And so she's like, so where are we going? And so she's uh, thinking like, oh, you go, and they're driving out to some alleyway. And I'm like, oh, well, he, I guess he's about to take her ass out. And she's like, are you about to kill me? Like, you about to sit here and just shoot me like right up here right now? He was like, no, I am not going to lay a head on your head because I'm a gentleman. And he opens up the door. And it's like, you can leave. And so I'm like, okay. It, I, she could call a cab and still get back home. Like, what, what was happening? Like, as I'm having this thought, she gets snatched up. The heel comes off. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Well, that's the end of her ass. And now we move back to the producer man who I guess they had, a, a Jamal and him had that encounter in the, the whatever that little room with all the shiny shit that looks like it's supposed to be a part of a, a carnival ride. Um, he said something about, well, if I'm not really needed here, then I can just go. And Jamal took it like, oh, so you can just fuck me and we just not going to be cool. You just going to brush me off like that? Okay. So he comes back and Jamal's kind of like, what are you doing here? And, and, you know, he was trying to do all, get all kissy and face on him and like, look, no, I thought you were trying to blow me off. And he was like, you know, I just didn't want to, you know, be, you know, I just didn't want to risk being outed or whatever. 
And so they have this whole conversation about, look, I ain't, Jamal ain't finna be doing this DL shit. He was, he's fought long and hard to live in his truth and this, that, and the fourth. And he's like, look, if you can't do it, then ain't gonna be much <laughs> for us between the you and I. And he's just like, you know, you know, I want to be with you, but I don't want everybody else to know. I don't feel like it's everybody else's business. And he's just like, I mean, look, it's either this way or the highway. And so, pfft. <laughs> which I can totally understand like you don't want to be out and then be trying to deal with somebody who's DL then you got to deal with hiding shit and secret calls secret meetings having to worry about stuff getting out of time like ain't nobody got time for that and Jamal knows it so really quickly we see that Carol and Candace are out at this really public restaurant and I'm trying to figure out what it is, what's this whole underlying issue that we don't know about? And so I'm thinking when she said, you know, I want to tell Cookie what me and Lucius did. I'm thinking like, did y'all fuck? Did y'all have sex? Like, what did, is one of, you? did you have a baby by him or something? Like, like this is the what we're thinking. I think what a lot of people were thinking, you know. And so we see that she apparently had Lucius kill some people while they were in jail. Or while, she, while Cookie was in jail and she doesn't know about it. And she's telling her all this. And uh, there's some dude in the back listening. I'm like, I don't know him. We don't know who this person is. Like, what what is his significance? So, uh, later on, we see uh, uh, Carol still at the bar and whatnot. <laughs> and the dude comes up and she's like, I forget what she said his name was. Like Tristan or something. And they, I guess they know each other. And, she, you know, he's trying to figure out, like, you know, what's going on? How you doing? <laughs> so, basically, they know each other. And we see that when he pays for her drink, that he's an FBI agent. So, I'm like, oh, Lord. So, he about to turn her ass in. Cookie going to get involved. And there's going to be some shit going down. And <laughs> it's just about to be a whole big mess. This is the seed that is planted for this mess. And there's only two episodes left. There's uh, one more episode and then the finale. So... Woo, Jesus, I can't wait. This shit is getting good. So next we see a scene with uh, Rhonda and Boo Boo Kitty. And, you know, I guess she's showing, you know, Rhonda's been so supportive, giving her all this baby stuff and, you know, talking to her. And she's, you know, just offering her a drink of wine, you know, just to unwind. You know, they're just having a little girl talk or whatever. And so... Boo Boo Kitty says, like, you know, my, if it was up to my mom, I would be on bed rest because, you know, it would really, it would feel really, really good, you know, especially on my feet. And as she's rubbing her feet, Rhonda looks down and has another flashback. And she, she remembers that when she got pushed down the stairs and fell like, you know, hump, you know, Humpty Dumpty, she looked and she saw that there was some red bottom flats walking out her door. And so now she realized that one plus one equals two. And has the realization quietly that this bitch pushed me down the stairs to kill my baby so she can have her baby. She has this and she realizes all this, but she's, you know, keeping a cool, calm and collective in her face. <laughs> and I don't know. We don't know what she's going to do with this information, but we're going to have to see. But lastly, y'all, this last scene of this episode. Holy shit. I was so scared. <laughs> I was legitimately afraid watching this. Like this, like she was really about to come in my room. Apparently, Grandma woke Lucius up at like three or four o'clock in the morning, dressed in like an apron to this dinner table. And apparently she made like 10 cakes. And she's hold she picks up this really sharp knife. And it's like Sit down, Dwight. And I'm like, okay. And he's sitting there. And she's like, I may, I slaved over all these food just for you. And he was like, I'm not hungry. She was like, eat it. And I won't say it again. I'm like, Now, this is an interesting predicament to be in because you know that she's crazy and you're having a crazy person hovering over you with a very sharp knife. So, and then so I think Ashley said this too, like, 
on Twitter, I'm almost positive that that cake was laced with some sort of rat poison of some sort because there's just, and then as he was eating it, this bitch is going on and on talk about uh, everybody leaves me, you always leave me. And he's like, I have to go to work. And, oh, before that, she was like, what happened to, uh, oh, shit, I forgot the caretaker's name, Consuela. What happened to, what's her name? And she's like, she doesn't work here no more. I'm like, uh, what happened to such and such? She's like, nope, she doesn't work here no more. We don't need her. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Lucius. And then she's going on and on about, you know, after what she talked about her, everybody be leaving her. She's like, you know, uh, your father left and <clears throat> all this stuff. And she was like, you know, I had everything. I had a perfect life before you came along. What do you want, Ruth? What you want? <laughs> she said, I had this perfect life. All my problems came when you came. And he's just looking at her like, like he had the same look, like he's a little boy again. I felt like his mind was going back to being a kid again. And <clears throat> so he's telling her to eat. And he was like, you were sick. You know, she asked, like, do you love me? And he, you know, shaked his head like, I'm going to say whatever you want to say, whatever you want me to say so you don't shake me in this damn kitchen, bitch. <laughs> and he's like, you liar. That's why you put me away for over 20 years. And he was like, you were sick. And she was like, I was sick. And I was too weak back then to kill you when I had the chance. I was like, oh no. Uh-uh. Now this is the this is the time where Lucius, you should have been looking around for weapons. Anything that I could grab, this bitch gotta go. I don't care if she's my mama. <laughs> she, uh-uh. We are not. No. Hell no. <laughs> I was scared. I was scared for Lucius. I felt so uncomfortable watching that. <laughs> Cause I'm like, how is how is he gonna escape from this room? This bitch just told me I wish I could have killed you before while she's holding a knife, having you eat food that she made that was probably laced with who knows what. <laughs> Lucius, take her out. Andre would have to understand. If not, oh well. But at least you'll still be alive. But that was this week's episode of Empire. Tell me what y'all thought about it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. If this is the first time that you're watching me, I hope you uh, like the video. Comment if you're uh, a, a current subscriber. And if you're not, I hope you decide to subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. I need to go and just regather myself because... <laughs> Ooh, this episode. Bye, y'all. Like, See y'all later. Share, subscribe. Jamar, Washington, Washington.